What is up guys? Thanks for watching as always. In this video we're actually talking about the Magabaz Magdraft. Uh, it's one of my favorite swim baits to use. I've got it in two different sizes. Uh, they're quite a versatile lure. I think they're used well, pr practically all over the world for a wide variety of fish species. Uh, in Australia they're using for barramundi, Murray cod, over here obviously for largemouth bass. Uh, I'm sure they'd be great on snook as well. Uh, Northern Pike, you name it, you can catch them, those fish with them. Uh, I own two different sizes. I've got the uh, the eight inch model right here. I don't really fish with it all that often because it's quite a heavy lure. Uh, requires quite a heavy rod setup as well. I don't enjoy uh, using broomstick rods for largemouth bass all that much. So we're mainly going to look at the um, the six inch model. This one right here, there we go. So this is the six inch model, I own a couple of them. Um, there's two different um, models that you can buy for the six inch one. One is the pre rig one that I've got right here, comes with the belly hook. Uh, the other one I've got right here, it's actually a double pack. Um, they come unrigged. Now the signage is off already, off of this pack already, but I like to keep the blister packs to keep the tail straight. Um, either one will go for $12.99, so you can either buy the rig one and it'll go for $12.99, or you can buy the double pack for $12.99, but that's unrigged. So, uh, I've got a weightless hook in this one with a belly weight, but now uh, you can rig them however you like. So, they're uh, very versatile lures. Let's see, this was kind of got like a rainbow trout pattern that called this one. Ooh, what was it? Uh, MB Gizzard. Whatever. I don't care for color all that much anyway. But um, they come in a handful of cool colors. So. Um, the swimming action on these is pretty cool because they've got quite a tight wobble. Um, the other model that uh, the Mag Draft came out with was the Max Low. The tail is slightly different on that model. The tail is tail connection is a bit thinner and the paddle is a little bigger um, makes you able to fish it very slowly uh, when the, and the tail will still be kicking out very wide this one when you start it up you're going to have to increase the pace on it a little much a little more than with the max low and it's got a very tight wobbling action um, because that tail connection is a bit thicker it actually makes the body shimmer a lot more as well than with the max low um, so let's have a quick look at how these actually swim in the pool. As you can see, pretty tight body roll, pretty tight paddle. Um, you don't have to fish them super fast, in contrast to a lot of other uh, swim baits that have a very tight paddling action. So that's one thing I do like about it, but how I do fish them is once I um, cast them in the spot that I want them to be, I give it two quick cranks to get the tail started, and then you can slow your pace down a little bit and you can actually uh, pause that lure every couple of cranks, so um, that's probably my favorite way to fish them because you can make those uh, fish commit to your lure on the on the pause of the lure, so works really well. Now the rod setup that I like to use for these is this particular setup. Um, I don't really enjoy fishing any heavier than with this rod. Um, that way I still have plenty of sport on, well almost any size bass. Uh, this is kind of like a, uh, you could use it for punching or you could even do some frog fishing with this. It's a perfect little rod for the six inch mag draft model. It's a uh, poison adrena. I think it's the first generation uh, model. It's rated 14 to 30 pounds, which seems quite heavy. Um, it is half to two ounce rating. It's a seven foot six rod. It's a very sensitive rod. Uh, I love the blank. I'm not a massive fan of the guys that they use because they're kind of too flimsy. Uh, but I'll probably get that redone anyway. Um, and then the reel I've got on there is a Daiwa Ryoga, uh, but again, any, any bait cast reel that's useful for bass fishing would do. Um, 
this one does deal with uh, pressures quite well, any heavy pressure. Uh, if you have to set the hook hard, that style of fishing, this reel deals quite well with it. So uh, that's my setup that I have for the for the six inch versions. Uh, you would probably want to do something a little heavier if you were to fish with the eight inch ones, um, but I'm not a massive fan of that because although I love targeting big bass just as much as the other guy, um, it does mean that you're going to catch maybe one or two fish a day instead of a whole bunch. I mean, we've had some good days, up to 30, 40 fish a person last year. So I'd rather use this setup with the six inch. With the six inch, I still have a chance of landing a personal best double digit fish, um, but I've also landed two pound fish on that lure. So um, you have a much wider variety of fish sizes that you can catch when you're targeting large mouth with those six inch models. Yeah, that's pretty much the setup. Now, what I wanted to look at in this video is, has not so much to do with the double packs that we got right here, because you, you can rig those however you want. Uh, what I wanted to look at was the ones that come in the single pack that are pre-rigged. So let me take this one, I have the blister pack. Um, as I said before, they come with a, hook, with a treble hook. Um, it's actually connected with a swivel, and it goes through some internal wiring. You may be able to see some of the wiring in there, right there. There's actually a magnet right there. That body is fairly translucent, so you should be able to see it. Um, once you push the hook up against it, that magnet holder is in place, but it's not really sufficient. So there is a way of inserting that hook into the body, like so. While you're fishing with this, that may still not be enough. So the first trick that I'll give you on these is to straighten out one of these points. And I should have a, a pair of pliers here somewhere. Now you can obviously change the trebles on these, but they've been working fine for me. But I very carefully bend out one of the hook points, trying to not break it. Ideally leaving the barb on there so that it has a bit of resistance in the plastic. Now you may need to heat that hook point up a little, because otherwise you have a risk of breaking it. You have to do this carefully. Oops. So now we've got a hook point that's uh, fairly well bent out. I don't want to straighten it all the way because then it's just going to fall out. But I want it to be able to sort of bite into the body as we put it in. Let me show you to pick the right one. That one. And then you can sort of push the back forward a little bit so that hook point can catch in. And that actually makes it a lot sturdier to use. You might be able to see that through the somewhat translucent body there. But that hook point's actually going slightly into the back, holding that travel in nicely in place. Now the magnet will assist with this, but not a whole lot. That's uh, the first thing that will you probably want to do with these lures. Now, the rest I've already done on this one. You may be able to see this here at the front. It's only barely noticeable. But there's a tiny little bit of wire wrapped in an H shape around the connection eye. So, with H shape, I mean the tag starts right here, it goes through the connection loop, around, and through again, around, through again and so forth, so it actually makes an H shape if you look at it from the top. Now the reason why I've done that is because last year uh, when I was fishing up just um, tied on one of these brand new mag drafts and I caught one fish with it, it was about a two pound fish then the second fish I got on it was significantly larger and unfortunately once I landed the fish that bait was completely gone and had shook the rubber bait off the internal wiring. The only thing that was left was the internal wiring. And I found out what that wiring looks like. Now this is all that's left because afterwards I accidentally broke a part of it off. But the wiring actually runs up. And your connection eye would be sitting right about here. 
and it remains open. It's not blocked off like it's like a circle like this. It's actually just an open piece of wire and it comes down. And during the fight that wire had bent out because it's it's very flimsy wire as you can see. It doesn't require much to bend it out. And I was lucky enough that the knot that I tied the um, lure on with hadn't slipped off the wire. Very easy to do. I played around with it for a bit that knot came off. So I was super lucky to um, still land that fish because it was quite a significant fish uh, too. Otherwise that fish would have also been swimming around with a hook in his mouth. Not a great thing. Um, so that connection eye is something that we need to try and fix. The, the hook hanger I'm not too worried about. This is actually supposed to be closed up. Uh, and that swivel that the treble is connected to is not going to slide off of this. It's going to get caught up on the, the, the hanger there that won't slide off. It is really the connection point that we need to try and fix. So I've, I've been playing around with a couple of different types of wire. And the one thing that I found was very useful to tie that eight loop with around the connection eye was, let me see if I've got some here, I should. Um, was actually this wire. And this came out of, believe it or not, a ballpoint pen spring. So I'll straighten the spring out. Now you're left with this very flexible wire. It is very strong though, so very useful for uh, tying it off. It's not the neatest look. Oh, let me see if I've got the other one here. I'll break it with the packaging. Actually, that one I haven't done yet. So it's not super neat, but it will prevent your line from sliding off the internal wiring if you were to lose the plastic. Uh, it also will prevent from this wiring coming off if you tie the eight loop because in case it would slide onto your line, it would be completely pointless. Your line would still slide off the wiring internally, obviously. So, so let's have a look at how exactly I eight check the wire through the connection loop and we'll go from there. Alrighty guys, so with this particular one, uh, I've already fixed the wire on the nose. It's gonna be kinda tough to tell, but there's a tiny little bit of wire going in an eight shape around the two wire pieces. So obviously it's a one loop right here. It goes around the first one, through, and around the second one, so in an eight shape. That way, it won't be able to slide on your line, um, and it also won't be able to slide down, and it prevents your line from being able to slide down the wire further if this rubber body does get destroyed one way or another. Okay, so I'll actually show you how to do it uh, with one that I haven't opened up yet. So, let's see here. I'd like to save as much of the blister pack as possible so we can put it back in there. Uh, there's a slightly different color. Uh, honestly, I don't really care much for color at all. Uh, but what we're going to try and do is make a little H shape in between the two wire points there. So the wire that I got for this set before is this little um, wire from a spring from a ballpoint pen. Um, I've already straightened this out so it's a little easier to work with. It's a little finicky but it's very easy to bend it and it is very very strong. So that way it won't um, come off the attachment point on the head too quick, if at all. So um, I'm gonna just cut the straight bit out. Pair of pliers. That's one. And that's two, like so. So how we're going to start off, and I'll move this out so it's a little easier to see. First I'll feed the first bit through the gap here, so that's through. And I want to make sure I've got plenty of tag in here to work with. I'm going to tie that off. And then feed this end through there. So I've essentially got a loop around it. 
but it goes through the actual attachment point. Now I want to make sure that it's straightened out because otherwise it's going to bite down into your into the plastic and it's only going to ruin your plastic which is exactly what we're trying to prevent. So I might have to speed up the camera work here a little bit in order for it to be viewable. So here's your first loop. As you can see it goes through the actual connection eye. Now what we want to do is we can either do it just with one strand or with both. We can continue to wrap it around and around so that it won't come off. Now this takes some time because this wire it needs to flatten out. So that's a little tricky to do. But I think in the end it's going to be worth it because at the very last chance of actually landing that big fish you wouldn't want to ruin your, your chances so alrighty guys now I uh, just wanted to save you some time here at this point I've kind of realized that the footage is not super clear on exactly what I'm doing with the wire um, but at this point it should be clear from me telling you that it's just an 8 chip that goes through the connection loop um, it's kind of tough to do in front of a camera. It's even tougher to see it. So my apologies for that, but um, hopefully it's clear at this point. Alrighty, so now I've only got the two strands left here. That figure eight shape is formed. It's actually on the actual connection point. I know it's gonna be really tough to see. Um, if I push this down, you may be able to see it a little bit better. There we go. And it will prevent your line from sliding down onto the wire itself whenever that lure is going. So now we're just going to finish it up and bop your uncle. There we go. We'll finish it up by just twisting these strands around. Alrighty guys, so there you have it. Uh, this is not very neatly trimmed as you can see, but at least it sort of points out where the wires are. So right now it's hanging loose, but we can push all of this down a little bit. There we go. So you can fit your line through here, but because underneath it there's a wire coil, an H shaped coil between the, the two metal points, uh, that will prevent your line from sliding down whenever this uh, rubber body is gone. That's kind of what we tried to fix. Uh, I know that this stuff is strong enough um, to prevent your line from sliding down. Now I'm not saying this will completely prevent bending out of any wire system, but it just needs to prevent your line from sliding down. And I think it'll just do the job just fine. So uh, I guess we'll be testing that out in a, about a month and a half and see how we go this year. Uh, these are excellent lures for the rest. So I'm looking forward to using them again. And uh, if you do have any questions, just let me know. And we'll go from there. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next one. Cheers.